What is going on outlaws? Once again Michael or Legacy Killer HD back with another Red Dead Redemption 2 video for ya. And another day, more information, some new images, and we have quite a few things to discuss. We're just about three weeks away from launch. It should be expected that hopefully every other day we should be getting some big Red Dead Redemption 2 information and images. I don't think that we're gonna see too much more footage, but I think there's still a lot of stuff to get revealed. So nonetheless, I quickly want to go over some of the news that has come today. First, supported languages for Red Dead Redemption 2 have been revealed thanks to a, I believe it's a support page from Rockstar, so there you have that. And Rockstar did make a post for the extended previews, there'll probably be a post on some of their social media sites later today. They just highlighted some of the impressions coming from GameSpot, IGN, Telegraph, and a few other websites. And interestingly, a while ago, Trusted Review leaked a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2 information, and the interesting thing they noted was a companion app, and what they noted was, the development notes claim a companion app is in the works to launch alongside Red Dead Redemption 2 later this year. Alongside social elements, it will also include a poker mini game of sorts. This kind of made sense, Rockstar Games had a lot of success with the iFruit app for Grand Theft Auto 5, and I think you see a lot of developers starting to do this with their games. You have Bethesda with their Fallout Shelter, the mobile gaming market is something that a lot of AAA developers want to get in on. But nonetheless, Rockstar Insider Tez Funds 2, he's a well-known insider for Grand Theft Auto Online updates, and he's also said some stuff regarding Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, he was on the GTA forums the other day, and he mentioned some new information regarding the companion app. He said it's still to be announced, and he also noted that it's also going to include something about hunting and fishing. So my guess is maybe the compendium's going to be accessible through that. Either way, that is something to be revealed, and it seems like there's going to be some good content within that, so it's very interesting. And there's actually one more detail I forgot to mention as I was recording, I remembered afterwards, but anyway, this Rockstar Insider was asked by some of the GTA Forum members for proof that this even exists, and he actually showed a link to the page that this is at. It shows Red Dead Redemption 2 application and access is forbidden. So yes, this is the real deal, it is happening, the question is, when does it get announced? Now, nonetheless, the big news coming today is coming via PlayStation. As most of you know, just yesterday we discussed the new details regarding the exclusive deal that they have with Rockstar. Uh, the new reveal was that select content from four updates would be coming to PlayStation 4 30 days early before hitting Xbox. Originally, I thought that this was going to be a lifetime deal for all the big updates, but it doesn't appear so, and it's just select content, so it could be just some online missions, some events, or some gear, so it's nothing too massive. But coming today, it actually appears that there is some more early access content coming first to PlayStation 4. This is not exclusive, and it is available for Xbox gamers, it's just that PlayStation 4 players will probably get this from the get-go, while well, you'll probably have to work for this if you're playing on Xbox. This is just kind of how games are nowadays. A lot of developers and publishers have content deals with the major platforms that their games are available on. Xbox usually works with Ubisoft and EA for some uh, early content type of things, and PlayStation PlayStation usually works with Activision, with games like Destiny and Call of Duty, and Rockstar Games has always had a strong connection with PlayStation. Now nonetheless, the big post they have today, it says, Hi folks, with the release of Red Dead Redemption 2 just weeks away, we wanted to share first details around some of PlayStation's 30-day early access content coming to Rockstar Games' deepest and most expansive world to date. Both Red Dead Redemption 2 and its multiplayer experience Red Dead Online will come with exciting PlayStation 4 benefits right from launch, and Red Dead Redemption 2 PlayStation PlayStation 4 players will be able to customize Arthur Morgan with the Grizzlies Outlaw outfit. Come November with the launch of Red Dead Online, PlayStation 4 players will get 30 days early access to the versatile Arabian horse featuring a custom alligator skin saddle and the high roller double action revolver. And next they actually detail these new images and the information regarding what they are. So first we have is the Grizzlies Outlaw outfit and I have to say it, it looks looks awesome, and I, th I think there's overall going to be many customization options, some really cool things that we can put on Arthur Morgan, and the Grizzlies Outlaw outfit is available day one in Red Dead Redemption 2 story mode and at the launch of Red Dead Online. A slick but rugged look, the Grizzlies Outlaw outfit is perfect for exploring the forests of Amberino, featuring a wool-lined, long coat with custom hand-tooled leather accents, a leather vest with ornate pattern details, stand wing tip collar with black neckerchief, and custom ornate buckle 
vehicle with matching boot tips. The Grizzly's outlaw outfit pays homage to the boss of the northern states, its real world inspiration. And next we have is the red chestnut Arabian horse, and from the image, what I find interesting is there's some type of town in the background. I really don't know where this is located, but it may be one of the new locations that Rockstar Games really hasn't showed off. I think there was an image showing parts of this location before, but I think it's clear that Rockstar Games is trying to steer clear of showing everything that this game has to offer, and I'm actually kind of thankful for that. But the description they have for this animal is known for its speed and handling, the red chestnut Arabian horse is in a class above most horses you would find in the wild, with performance a step above from the first tier of available horses. And next, with the Alligator Skin Ranch Cutter Saddle, which I believe is actually on that horse, available at the launch of Red Dead Online. In addition to its stylish look, the Alligator Skin Ranch Cutter Saddle provides a number of benefits when equipped, including core health and stamina boosts, which increase speed and acceleration for the horse. This saddle is an enhanced version of the basic saddle that comes stock for players when starting Red Dead Online. And now the last one is the the High Roller Double Action Revolver, available at the launch of Red Dead Online. This weapon we've already seen before, it actually came within Grand Theft Auto 5, I believe it was part of that treasure hunt that's going on for Red Dead Redemption 2. As most of you know, there was also the Tomahawk that was featured. But the interesting thing about this weapon is that it has some different designs on it, and I have to say, the gun customization and the overall customization is going to be really fun messing around with in this game. I mean, look at the design on that weapon, it looks stellar, and I don't really know what else to say, it just these weapons look so unique and I'm fascinated by all the customization options that are coming with Red Dead Redemption 2 in both the multiplayer and single player. But the details on this specific weapon is, looks could kill. The high roller double action revolver features a polished steel body with unique period inspired beautifully detailed engraving work. The deadly quick draw revolver comes complete with unique playing card and skull elements carved into the grip. Its superior quick rate of fire over all other revolvers makes it a great choice for mounted combat. So yes, this appears to be just the first details on some of the early access content coming to the PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, Xbox gamers don't get this privilege. Like I said before, Xbox works with other developers and partners, and obviously Sony works with somebody like Rockstar Games. But this doesn't mean that this is exclusive content. All of this will be available for Xbox gamers. This just seems to be coming first to PlayStation 4. But to continue on, we have even more gameplay details to break down. I want to thank GTA 4 member Chodor on. Some details that he extracted from the 3D Juegos preview. This is a Spanish preview, I probably bombed the name of the website, but he included some of the highlights that came from it. He noted that you can have several horses stored, each one with different equipment. And one of the examples that was given is that one horse comes with guns for hunt, others with guns for missions, etc. And there was no photo mode actually in the game, well at least the cut that they were playing. The subtitles are small but have a black background, the font is white. You can subtitle all dialogues or only cutscene dialogue. You can sprint with your horse if the snow is too dense. If you go to the character menu, you can see how much minutes you need to run if you want to level up your resistance, and there's 10 levels max, he believes. Rockstar said that you can encounter your camp characters in the cities. We've already seen that kind of. Like in the saloons, you can see various members of the gang. That may be something that actually happens, but yeah, these are real people that have real schedules going on. The gore is said to be very intense. We kind of saw that with the gameplay trailer part two. And it said that the previewer throws dynamite to a crowd, and he saw a lady lose her hand and another lost her arm, so yeah. In a fight, you can knock down your rival and punch him in the face several times, and you can see how his face is deforming, bruises and blood, and he said that it is very brutal. We saw that again within the gameplay part 2, obviously Arthur Morgan, I believe he got jumped by two type of enemies, and you could see them fighting, you could see how brutal it was getting. Now the previewer also notes when he was riding, he saw a bird collide with Arthur's head and it died, so... Yeah, you can make your own camp like in Red Dead Redemption and cook and craft things there. You see Arthur making his own food. With the eagle eye feature, you can track animals' footprints and smells, and also you can highlight the things that you interact with in a room. The previewer also saw a guy fishing, and he shot him and stole his fishing rod. And when Arthur Morgan actually does go swimming, his resistance goes down very, very fast. And if you eat a raw meal, your health and resistance will only increase a little, but if you cook it, it will increase a lot. And there is no auto health regeneration. That is actually huge. Having a lot of food on you and medicine is going to be very important within Red Dead Redemption 2. And it has been noted that some food can be good for your resistance, so maybe it makes swimming a little bit easier, and others can improve your health, and others can obviously improve Deadeye. We already know that because if you smoke cigarettes, 
yeah, that helps your Deadeye. And it was also said that carrots have a different effect on Arthur, which will only increase a little bit of his health, but his horse, it will increase a lot of its resistance. Now to some details regarding the city of St. Denise, we already discussed that in my last video, but he mentioned that there is a lot of gun shops and there's various weapons that are very expensive that we can purchase, and there are different levels of drunkenness. When Arthur gets totally wasted, he staggers and sings, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, in a fight, Arthur punches an enemy, he ends up falling on a bed with his head bleeding. When he gets up, you can see the sheet stained with blood. We already know a little bit about the attention to detail with things like this, because Arthur Morgan, I believe in a previous NPC interaction that we broke down, Arthur Morgan, he skinned and hunted a deer, and he put the deer on the back of his horse, and the deer's blood was all over Arthur Morgan and his horse, so this game is going to be extremely detailed. Continuing on, you have two types of whistles to call your horse. There's the short range, which is down on the D-pad, and the long range, which you'll have to hold down the D-pad. But now to the last detail that we have regarding this preview. The shopkeeper of St. Denise was very scared when Arthur wanted to rob him, but the Valentine shopkeeper was not because he had been robbed a lot. So it looks like NPCs or shopkeepers will react differently and wherever you're at. So maybe in Van Horn, they won't really freak out, I guess. In the city of St. Denise, they're not used to that. So it looks like NPCs react differently based on where they're located. But I actually wanted to end this video off of another NPC interaction. I've been noting these because they're really interesting. They're not featuring any spoilers, but they're just, there's so many moments within Red Dead Redemption 2, I just want to point out a few of them. And GameSpot pointed out, they encountered a Mexican gunslinger shooting bottles off of a railroad bridge. We approached him and he revealed that he crossed the border to find the best marksman in America. The man then challenged us to see who could shoot the most bottles off of the bridge in half a minute, with each of us wagering $5 or $10. We agreed to wager $5, and when the challenge ended, we saw that he had shot one more bottle than we were able to. The man then asked if we'd like to double down the wager, we declined, and just as we were about to leave, he reminded us that we had not paid him. It seems that the game does not automatically deduct the money from your wallet when you accept these kinds of challenges. Rather, you have to manually interact with the man to give him the money. We were then presented with the option to either pay him or refuse. Naturally, we chose the latter, and the man responded by firing at us. These NPC interactions are going to be a lot of fun. There seems to be a lot of substance to them, and it's not just like how it was in Red Dead Redemption. It seems like you'd walk up to a bunch of bandits, and you pretty much were left with one option. You had to kill them. And then there was also some really unique moments in Red Dead Redemption. Like, I believe there was some people messing around with dynamite, and they just kind of automatically blew each other up. That was just a fun interaction that we had, but there wasn't much interactivity with that. I guess that's the point with Red Dead Redemption 2. There's a lot of interactivity and a lot of choice within the world. But anyway, guys, we discussed a lot of new Red Dead Redemption 2 information, and we even got some new images. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Just about three weeks away from launch, still a lot to be revealed, so make sure you are subscribed with the notifications on. But again, thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value. And remember, Outlaws for Life.